Name a more iconic duo. Go ahead. I'll wait. Actually, I, I would like to hear what you all like. Uh, you all consider an iconic duo in the comments section down below. I'd love to hear what you all have to say because for me, growing up and only only being able to watch a lot of cartoon reruns uh, because of uh, where I lived, we had a we originally we didn't have cable, and we we basically had old VHS tapes that had stuff recorded onto them. And um, there were, I believe, around 10 or 12 Tom and Jerry uh, tapes that were just filled with old Tom and Jerry episodes. And as a matter of fact, there were some half episodes, like episodes that I never knew the conclusion of until years later. And whenever me and my family would watch Tom and Jerry... I would always laugh, like, laugh uncontrollably because of just, because of how iconic Tom and Jerry was. And at the time, I didn't realize just how great it was. Yeah, it's like, because I was a dumb kid, it's like, <laughs> slapstick, <laughs> Yeah, but instead, dude, Tom and Jerry, way, like, just way above, like, its, its weight in terms of its overall impact that it had on the animation industry... And not only that, but also it was worked on by multiple different studios. Because I remember there was an era of Tom and Jerry where it was done by Tex Avery. Then there was an era where it was done by Chuck Jones. Uh, gosh, there were like there were multiple eras of Tom and Jerry. And the less you say about the modern interpretations, the better. That does include the film in the 90s, which... Even as a kid... I still thought that was an awful film. And then there was the uh, Tom and Jerry movie that came out not too long ago that had Chloe Grace Moretz in it. And all I'm going to say is, does the neuralizer from Men in Black exist so I can like neuralize myself to forget that that film even exists? Ugh. So, Doug, a.k.a. the Nostalgia Critic, has done a top 10 Tom and Jerry episodes, and I guess I'm gonna check it out, see what kind of uh, see what kind of craziness Doug brings up. I mean, I hope that he brings up some of uh, my favorites, and uh, I hope, and also I hope that uh, I, if there's some here that I'm not aware of, which I'm pretty sure I've seen every Tom and Jerry cartoon there is out there, but. If I see one here that I don't recognize, I'm definitely going to have to check it out. But anyway, let's go ahead and get this up on screen. This is the top 11 Tom and Jerry episodes according to the Nostalgia Critic. Here we go. darkness. Then there was shingles. Oh, Jesus! Oh, God! Oh! Yeah, pretty gross. And the truth is, the pain hurt so much I couldn't shave my head or put on my hat and glasses. It's bizarre. But even that ain't gonna keep me from getting y'all a Nostalgia Critic video this week. So, in this audio-only vid, we're gonna talk about something we've talked about a lot <laughs> on this channel. Tom and Jerry. We've talked about the good, the bad, and the... <laughs> Jesus. But we never have narrowed down what the absolute best of the best is when it comes to the iconic <laughs> duo. With so much phenomenal writing, creative slapstick, and blood curling screams. Ah! It's strange to think I never just sat down and listed what I thought were the best shorts of this timeless team up. So, because even on a sick day I want to work, I'm going to give you what I think is their top 11 best shorts. Why top 11? Because I'm sick, okay? I'll get you a review next week. This is the top 11 best Tom and Jerry episodes. Ah, uh, shingles. Fun. Number 11. The Flying Cat. Nothing too yeah. much to say about this one apart this from one. it's just funny. Yeah. Tom tries to gobble up a house canary, but when Jerry saves him from his clutches, Tom improvises, turning a girdle into a pair of wings. <laughs> this idea is simple, yet creative. 
We've seen plenty of cartoons that invent something that makes them fly, but something about Tom with those pink wings really seems to stay with people. Anyone who sees this episode remembers it. <laughs> Part of that too is the slapstick is just ungrade. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the one where they pull the, the thing at the back and he's just left flapping. Tom's expressions whenever something goes wrong are delightfully clueless. The sound effects every time he's hit are creatively painful. <laughs> and having Tom in the air sets up a lot of inventive scenarios. The short also has a lot of good build-up from Tom slowly approaching Jerry, from the music holding on this one suspenseful note until Tom's completely off frame. about you, but my nether regions hurt like hell whenever I watch this. Ooh, yep, that's the one. <laughs> oh, that was so good. Thank God they all have Ken genitalia. Their screams would be very high-pitched. <laughs> Not too much else to talk about. It's just a solid short with some solid laughs. <laughs> that's a classic. Number 10. The Night Before Christmas. Yes! This is one of their earlier shorts, so you'll notice their yeah. design and even screams are a little different. <laughs> Truth be told, the slapstick is only okay in this one as they were still trying to find their footing. But yeah, this early, these early days of Tom and Jerry, uh, when Tom actually was originally known as Jasper and also the fact that the woman that was looking after the house was a black woman, and she had that stereotypical, like, Ebonics voice, like, Jasper? Jasper. It was like, and then later on, when they overdubbed it, instead of keeping, you know, continuity to the time, him being called Jasper, instead, he, they just overdubbed it with Thomas? Thomas! Uh. But honestly, it still has some good animation, all around good atmosphere. Jerry starts playing with toys under the tree on Christmas Eve, resulting in Tom chasing him down. After a lot of back and forth shenanigans, Tom throws him out of the house into a snowstorm, and in a rather sweet moment, he fears for his safety. He leaves the door open, hoping he'll find his way back, and when he doesn't, he goes searching for him on his own. It's one of the few times in the Hanna-Barbera day yeah, that the two really end up caring about each other, in a way that's done right, and it results in a fair amount of heart. The backgrounds are also gorgeous in this, really giving this short an elegant and warm feel. When you're outside, you really feel the bitter cold, and when you're inside, the heat of the fire comes across so strong you practically feel warmed up yourself. Yeah. On top of that, there's just Christmas everywhere in this. The imagery, the constant choir singing carols. <sighs> and of course, the spirit of caring at the end. Well, not one of the funnier ones, it is one of the more emotional ones. It makes you want to snuggle up under a blanket and watch it with a warm cup of hot chocolate. With an occasional electric current here and there. It's good holiday-friendly stuff. That's a good one. Number nine. Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Mouse. Oh, yes. Oh. Uh, so many memes. This one certainly dives into So the many inside. memes from this one. <laughs> oh, God. Just tropes that were so popular at the time. Jerry keeps stealing Tom's milk no matter how many times he hides it. Tom gets his revenge, though, by putting in, I don't know, chemicals that aren't that different from what we put in milk. Resulting in, ouch. Weirdly enough, the opposite reaction. <laughs> Jerry becomes stronger than ever, but it has a limited lifespan, meaning he has to keep juicing in order to keep kicking Tom's ass. In a nice twist, Jerry makes the same concoction, but when Tom steals it and drinks it, it has the same effect, making him the size Jerry was when he took it. In fact, it works too well, making him smaller and smaller to where Jerry can whoop him without the milk roids. <laughs> On top of the slapstick being on point, there's a ton of fun little details. As mentioned before, there's a lot of trademarks of old mad scientists and monster movies incorporating... A the, the shadow in the background, you know, that that's such a classic. A lot of shadow work, puffs of smoke with bubbling liquids. Yes. Bubbles! And inventive transformations. All they have to do is make Jerry drink this stuff and grow muscles. 
but instead he goes through this weird process that's like starting up a car with an engine that's about to explode. <laughs> and then the engine works too well. The way Jerry walks with the slow musical score is very reminiscent of giant towering threats walking slowly towards their prey. Only in this case it's funnier because he isn't towering over Tom at all. <laughs> <laughs> for its little touches or bombastic violence, this uh, cartoon has both the civilized and beastly side of zaniness covered. So good. <coughs> Jerry's cousin. Hey, this has to be one of my favorite topics. With the doyby. Relax, cousin. Nothing's gonna happen. Shit then proceeds to happen. I'm a Jerry character, so and for good. whatever reason, he's only used in this one episode. Muscles is Jerry's incredibly thick cousin, yes. who just so happens to look exactly like him. When Tom's antics are getting too much for Jerry, he reaches out to Muscles for help, and, surprisingly, they don't do the Switch identity scenario. Not until the end, at least. Uh. Muscles beats the shit out of Tom, and every time he tries to fight back or... <laughs> Okay. Not until the end. A little little Muscles detail here. The shit out, Tom. When he when the explosion happens, watch Tom's Every ears. Time. Literal drum heads. <laughs> That's so good. Also Tom's eyes. Tries to fight back or even build his own muscle. He gets his ass handed to him. After recruiting cats from a Norm McDowell movie and still losing, Tom oh. surrenders unaware that Jerry has finally taken his place at the end. <laughs> the overall attitude of this episode is great, and so much of that comes from the over-the-top tough guy routine. Muscles is just a great character. His design is great despite him looking like Jerry with a chipmunk shirt. I don't know why cartoon rodents wear these. And his voice? Bless him, pussy cat. Don't let me catch you picking on my little cousin while I'm around. I don't even know what that voice is, but I love it. Relax, cousin. Nothing's gonna happen. It's oh. like Terry. Oh, come on, you didn't show it! Hey, Malloy, if he was played by Harvey Firestein. Everything about this character Relax, is Relax, cousin. Well, so long, cousin. These hit cats are also pretty great, oh, despite you, only oh, having oh, a few oh, seconds of screen time. Yeah. 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 Okay. I feel like All every right, new boys. character you Let's just go. get right away because of how comedically fast they have to get them across. You instantly understand their identity in a few seconds. Obviously, the violence centering around both the on-screen and off-screen strength of muscles is what makes it so uniquely fun. <laughs> I feel like they could have done more with this guy in a similar vein like what they did with Droopy suddenly becoming strong when he gets You know what? That makes me mad. Angry and beat somebody up. Maybe he's like Popeye Spinach, like he's Jerry's last minute solution, or they could have played with some creative ways to actually defeat him. Like maybe Tom comes up with a concoction, like from the last one we were talking about. I don't know, I just feel like there's so many opportunities with this guy. <laughs> there Still, it what is. What we did get was pretty great, and led to one hell of a funny episode. Great episode, yeah. Number seven. Mice Follies. Ah. Yeah, I had to work in at least one episode with yeah. Tuffy in there. Before. Yeah, that, uh, honestly, there's several episodes that have Tuffy in it that I'm just like, that I'm okay with, but for the most part, yeah, it's... It's hitched in there pretty, like, pretty ridiculously, and it's an hour. Who knows, gotta make up for what they do with them later. <laughs> While the slapstick and humor are all on point, that's not what makes this short stand out. What makes <laughs> it stand out is the surprisingly simple beauty of it. Jerry and Tuffy fill the kitchen with water and then freeze it by rewiring the fridge. This turns the entire room into a skating rink, which naturally Tom chases them around. There's been a lot of skating scenarios in cartoons before, but this time they take to really letting you enjoy the creativity and, in a strange way, wonder of this setup. And it is really appreciated. Even just filling the kitchen with water, they really let you enjoy both what a silly but also kind of whimsical visual this is. Yeah. It, you see, that's imagination. That's what I've always said is, like, with these... With cartoons nowadays, is like... It, they're, like... While the character work and stuff like that, it, 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 I don't know, it's just, a lot of it feels safe. Whereas, if they played this in a modern day cartoon, 
then, you know, people will be up in arms just like, this promotes kids waste, you know, like, kids wasting water. What kind of, what kind of, like, message does this send to kids about saving water, given the fact that, you know, we're, like, we're, like, we're in the middle of a drought or something like that? It, people will always find a reason to complain about anything. But the it's music a cartoon. playing a big part in pulling you in. Yeah. Speaking of music, I think every kid immediately recognizes the Sleeping Beauty ballet from, well, Sleeping Beauty. And while yes, most kids are probably going to think of that first, it's hard to think of another piece of music that would make this feel as weirdly elegant. Just look at the image of this frozen kitchen. It's almost like a surreal painting you'd see in a museum. <laughs> and when the action gets going, it is still really funny. But the punch is still jolting Tom out of his sense of worth. Ooh. And one of my favorite reactions with him flying into the basement and readying his revenge. I love how you have to pee. <laughs> Me after coming in after three hours of shoveling the damn driveway. <laughs> okay, to be fair, the driveway and the sidewalk in front of the garage. Oh my god. That's 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 my face. I'm sorry. <laughs> Just, I love, okay, do it again. Worth. Yeah. And one of my favorite reactions with him flying into the Whee! basement and readying his revenge. <laughs> Sorry. I keep laughing at it because it's just, I've been there. <laughs> just like coming in with a shoulder, shovel over my shoulder and just be like, you said you were going to help me. Why didn't you help me? <laughs> I love how you have to piece together what happened here. He dived headfirst into a bucket. It was so hard, he burst a hole in it. He turned himself right side up, unable to get it off, and just kept it on as a metal skirt, I guess, and grabbed a weapon to fight back on his way upstairs. The expression on his face is definitely one that has gone through all that. Yeah. <laughs> also, okay. Uh, the expression on his the, face the is fact definitely that... one that has gone through all that. <laughs> Another detail of this, look at Jerry's imprint in the shovel. The tongue is out. They've done that before, but it's so good. Ending on what I consider another classic visual with Tom getting frozen, frozen today. today. Hey, two callbacks. Hey. That's both very funny and surprisingly kind of enchanting <laughs> animated short. <laughs> so good. Uh... Number six. Jerry and the Lion. Oh! The lion escapes the circus and yes. finds Jerry, hoping he can get him home to the jungle. Jerry agrees, but only after he helps to take out another feline who has a talent of interrupting plans. This one is funny for all the reasons you'd think it'd be funny. The Lion, I swear, must have been loosely inspired by Wizard of Oz with his voice and demeanor. Yet, he still comes across enough as his own unique character and not a ripoff. <laughs> so you help me get back to the jungle, please? Jerry and him make a good team up, as Tom is never sure if it's. A I'll say this for me: the elephant. But I know that you know the uh, animals escaping from the zoo, or you know something like that, are getting lost from the zoo. While I like this one, I also love the elephant one just a little bit more, and I, I think it's because of like, the visuals of just the they because they transform the baby elephant into a giant mouse and whenever uh tom cat you know, sees the giant mouse the or sees like the elephant as the giant mouse the baby elephant has his nose like wrapped up his uh, like snout wrapped up in a ball and he like he like blows out and his nose comes out like a like a punching uh like a uh, what do they call that like a uh it's like that uh, punching bag on the stick, you know, you, you push it and it, like the punching bag goes out. Basically like one of those and just pong right in Tom's face. It's so good. It's almost like the Chuck Norris bit from Family Guy. It's like, they say that Chuck Norris does not have a beard. They say that under Chuck Norris's beard, there is not a chin. 
There is only another fist. That's ridiculous. Chuck Norris. <laughs> Actually, a lion so in this good. house, or if Jerry somehow became miraculously strong. <laughs> He has a lot of classic staples you'd associate with the best Tom and Jerry jokes, like Tom holding his chin out, defiantly urging to be hit, only to get exactly what he asked for. Yeah. How can you not laugh at that face of undiluted cockiness just begging to be obliterated? It plays in proportions, surprising both the foil and the audience. And it has one of the funniest combinations of Tom's scream when he thinks he's cornered Jerry in a closet, not knowing the lion is yeah. with him. That first initial smack sounds so surprised, let down, and painful all in one grunt. <laughs> it ends with Jerry pulling the lion on a boat to Africa, and though brief, you do feel a legit friendship between these two as, once again, the beautiful background and somber music leaves us on a bittersweet but still kind of nice moment. Yeah. Goodbye. Goodbye, pal. So long. It's a funny short with a good friendship, <laughs> great timing, and a whole bunch of hilarious yells. <laughs> Number five. Heavenly Puss. Oh this is no. One of the darkest episodes. Yeah, dude. Real? Okay. I mean, I can see putting this up here because there's some existential stuff that they cover in this and it's it it literally opens with tom dying and going to heaven being told that if he doesn't get forgiveness from the one he wronged being jerry he'll burn in hell <clears throat> for all eternity Let me have it, <laughs> this could be played for laughs and in much of the cartoon it is but there's also a lot of heavy and even disturbing moments Probably the most unsettling one being a bag of drowned kittens making their way to the pearl. Oh, yeah. When I was a kid, I didn't get that. As an adult. Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh. How someone has th the cold-heartedness to do that blows me away. It really does. I... Oh, God. If I ever came across someone doing that, it would take a lot of, like, willpower to not beat them within an inch of their life. Because how the fuck dare you? Gates. What some people won't do. God damn, Tom and Jerry. It even ends with Tom not making it in time and going to hell. <laughs> this short ain't fooling around. Well... Actually, it is. It was all a dream. But yeah. still, if you're a kid watching, this isn't the usual fare you'd expect of Tom and Jerry. <laughs> all right, Tom. All right. It does result in a nice enough ending, and of course, there are the usual follies, but there's also a little bit more weight to this one. Yeah. There's a legit sense of dread, hoping Tom gets Jerry's forgiveness while hopping through a series of what should be simple hoops, like Jerry not believing him or even just a pen not working. But in the moment, these seconds are literally defining his life. <laughs> The fact that it does take a more somber tone is interesting, though. Even this train conductor doesn't really have a silly or zany voice. It's He's more serious? of a kind, elderly angel who really wants Tom to succeed, but knows he had several chances while he was living as well. Uh, with a record like that, I can't let you through. I'm sorry, Tom. If you can obtain the signature of that little mouse, you will be permitted to pass. It's a different kind of feel, but it is still Tom and Jerry. And despite it getting so heavy, it never quite loses track of it. If you haven't checked this one out, there's a sure chance in hell you'll find it interesting. Yeah. <laughs> Number four. Uh. Mouse in Manhattan. Ah, this is an one that yes. relies less on slapstick and more on atmosphere. Yes. Jerry decides he's done fighting with Tom in the middle of nowhere and makes his way to the big city. Only to find uh. out it's not everything it's cracked up no. to be. This obviously has a tip of the hat to the town mouse and the country mouse, with Jerry entering a world he thinks he'll adore but ends up getting swallowed up by it and yearning for his original home. Tom only yeah. shows up at the beginning and end, focusing mainly on Jerry's adventure, but its visual storytelling told through the stylized backgrounds, elegant music, and Jerry's expressions really do make it a magical yet still threatening journey. 
The city is made to look so grand and beautiful, really capturing the artistry yes. of many New York landmarks. But it also has that sense of foreboding, like something is lurking in the shadows and can get you at any moment. Yeah, the alley cats of New York will devour Jerry alive. Not only that, but also the rats, too. Oh dear god, the rats. It's definitely a short you watch for how visually pleasing it is as opposed to the humor, which is not to say it doesn't have its funny moments. Yeah! <laughs> Honestly, this whole short is worth it just to look at the backgrounds alone, with the colors that both leap out at you but feel comfortably settled. You can't say this doesn't capture the size and awe, but also intensity and mayhem of a major city. I really enjoy too when he returns and he bumps his head Bonk. on the home sweet home sign and smiles, as if to say, yeah, it's not perfect, but that's part of what makes it home. It's a nice little touch. Yeah. It's a great short with great imagery, great music, and an obvious but still admirable lesson. Yep. Doug hasn't put, like, a, there's several on here, or several that I haven't seen yet that just, I don't know, I, I really wish that, I, I'm hoping that I see some that I, that I hold in high esteem, because I know that the Billiards episode is really good, the, uh, the, the Cat and Mouse War episode was really good. Oh, that's Nick. He's probably up there. I don't know what he's doing, but he's doing something because he's moving around. And then, of course, there's uh, some of the Mouseketeer episodes. Uh, at least at least one or two of the Mouseketeer episodes. Like the one where Tom literally at the end of it gets his, gets, <laughs> gets his head cut off. Yeah, he gets decapitated. Sad. But hey, it's a cartoon. Number three. Cat Concerto. Oh, this one. Okay. I'm glad that this one's on here, because the... <laughs> oh, gosh. So this good. This is the Tom and Jerry cartoon that won them an Academy Award. Yep. And not without controversy. We'll get to that in a bit. The setup, once again, is very simple. Tom is playing Hungarian Rhapsody for a packed house, but Jerry lives inside the piano and starts messing up his performance due to Tom interrupting his nap. This is one where the timing and music take center stage. The way they take this piece of music and animate it to comedic violence goes hand in mouse. Well, technically it's Hungarian, Hungarian Rhapsody number two. Uh, I mean... Trap. <laughs> As the piece keeps building, so does the slapstick, resulting in a great third act where Jerry takes over playing and traps Tom in a loop where he just keeps trying to end the piece, but Jerry keeps starting it over. It's both great to watch and great to listen to. Uh, you're not done. It's almost like a comedic fantasia working in elegant animation that matches every beat of the music except when it needs to break off to get a laugh. If you want proof of how well so this good. is done, look at another short that was nominated the same year for an Academy Award with the exact same premise but from a different studio, Rap City Rabbit. Just about everything about this setup is the same, including the music. The only difference is, thankfully, the jokes. To this day, nobody knows if this was plagiarism or coincidence. And while neither director accused the other of thievery, Joseph Barbera did famously bring up that Tom and Jerry fighting this scenario makes sense. But what's a rabbit doing with a mouse? That's a good question. That's a really good question. <laughs> oh, I'm not one to fuel controversy. Okay, sometimes I am. I'm not one to, like, ca cast stones at, like, you know, ghosts of the past because, you know, this is, you know, this is, you know, something that... Yeah, everyone involved in this is dead. Literally. I think... Yes, everyone involved in this is dead. So, yeah. Anyway. 
There's a good video by Toon Raider discussing the controversy you should check out, and while I do like Rhapsody Rabbit a lot, there's no contest. Cat Concerto is definitely done better. Yes. The jokes feel more natural and organic, not just with the cat and mouse team up, but also in the way they're naturally structured and built upon each other. Bugs Bunny ends with the mouse pulling out a mini piano to best him. It's not nearly as clever as Jerry forcing Tom to play the finale over and over to death just because it's artistically pleasing. <laughs> it's amazing music and amazing animation with an amazing coincidence. All right, what's number, number two? two? Saturday evening push. So we're just done with phrasing, right? That's not a thing anymore. Damn it! Of course. Uh okay. So here's the thing. I've done that joke multiple times in our gaming videos. Multiple times. <sighs> Damn it, Archer. This one's almost number one for me, but the top spot is just a little bit better. That's just to give you an idea about how absolutely hilarious this is. Again, kind of depending on which one you see. Again, we'll get to that in a bit. Tom's owner goes out for the night, allowing him to throw a party, once again waking up Jerry from his slumber. Obviously, he tries to put a stop to the noise, and hijinks ensue. The zany imagery, slapstick, and voice acting all take center stage. <laughs> Not only do they find clever ways to play instruments that aren't normally instruments, as well as visually show how Jerry is being driven nuts by all of it. But we get to hear some of the funniest gibberish out of Jerry. And of course, a plethora of palpable pain. <laughs> the party environment is a lot of fun and keeps the energy high, but by far what cements this as a classic is the ending. Jerry calls the owner, letting her know what's going on, and all that has to happen is she returns home and throws them out. One, two, done. Honestly, just this edit would be totally serviceable. Excuse me! But that's not what happens. This is a joke that builds upon itself so much, I actually have to count the layers to it. There's her getting a call and rushing out. There's her running so fast she makes a car engine noise. <laughs> There's her arriving so pissed she doesn't burst through the door, but rather with the door. There's Tom and the others so clueless they just open the door like any other guest. There's the combination of her reaction and their reaction. Tom! There's Tom trying to close the door thinking that'll save him. There's the owner so filled with anger that the door breaks through her arm. <laughs> There's her arm stopping Tom from leaving. There's a massacre she's unloading on them that's so big you can see it from far away. There's them getting kicked out of the house. And finally, there's them getting hit so hard they form a totem pole. That's a <laughs> Yeah. That version is far superior than the, the other one. Been layers of comedy in a span of 20 seconds. Goddamn phenomenal. Yes. And the sad thing is, this isn't the ending everybody sees. Okay, it's hard to sum up quickly, but Tom's owner is a racial caricature of the time. Hell, her name is Mammy Two-Shoes. While there were many worse depictions in cartoons, even in Tom and Jerry, admittedly this caricature doesn't have the best history. So in the 60s, they replaced her with a white girl. And I do mean girl, she looks like the babysitter from another Tom and Jerry cartoon. And they switched out the voice with, I think, June Foray. And by God, even though I love June Foray, this is just not as funny. <laughs> If you want something really confusing, I remember seeing a version of this where it's the white girl with the black woman's voice. A party? At my house? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh god, whoever didn't fix that audio is probably fired. Also, yeah, the... <sighs> Maybe two shoes. Oh god. Look, I'm not gonna sit here and I'm not gonna defend caricatures that offend people. But at the same time, here's what I would ask. The people that it's supposed to offend, if they are offended by it, then okay. But if you are a person who is looking at this from a point of where you're just like staring at this and you're getting pissed off on someone else's behalf, there's a problem. There's a big problem with that. But my whole deal is just... <clears throat> If, you know, 
the people the people who would be offended by that watch this and are offended by it. Yeah, there you go. But yeah, I I can see problems with it if you know if, if you know there are people who are upset with it. You know, like the people who it's supposed to offend are offended by it. But at the end of the day, the comedy with that version just works so much better. It does. I mean, there's no getting around it. The comedy in that version just works so much better. Holy shit. Anyway. Yeah, it was bizarre. The original voice of Tom's owner is Lily and Randolph. You may remember from It's a Wonderful Life. Years later, Whoopi Goldberg did a really great DVD introduction talking about why erasing her performance, though a caricature, was not the right way to go about it. I definitely recommend checking that out if you haven't before. Removing Mammy Two-Shoes from this collection would be the same as pretending that she never existed. A part of our history that cannot and should not be ignored. I'm d I agree. Here's the thing. How do we prevent this from happening again? By accepting its existence, learning from the mistakes, and moving forward as a society. That is what it's supposed to be. However, unfortunately, that's not the that's not the Kool-Aid everyone's drinking nowadays. Definitely not gonna pretend I'm an expert in what's ethically right in all this, but I will say Randolph's acting is ten times funnier. And not because of any stereotyping, but because she made us identify with the anger anyone would have had there. Whatever version you see, this has some of the funniest stuff in any Tom and Jerry cartoon. It's zany, violent, musical, imaginative, and with an 11 layer joke, how can that not be high up on a top 11 list? Oh. Before I get to number one, it probably goes without saying, there's a ton of great runners up. All these cartoons are worth checking out once you finish up these episodes. If you've missed any of these, you're missing. Hey, there's one, Two Musketeers. See something really great. Bodyguard's a good one. With that said, the number one greatest Tom and Jerry episode is... Mouse Trouble. This is the most generic title for the most generic scenario of what should be the most generic episode. But it pulls out, in my opinion, the biggest laughs of any Tom and Jerry short. Yeah, the it's up there. It's so basic. Tom is reading a book about how to trap mice, and he tries every one of them on Jerry. That's it. It's the most bare bones Tom and Jerry short you can imagine, but it does it better than any of the previous ones. The timing, sound effects, screams, expressions, it's all done to perfection. If someone has never seen a Tom and Jerry cartoon before, this is the one to show them. <laughs> one of the best and strangest running jokes started in this one. When the book says a corner mouse never fights and Tom gets beaten up, he says, no, Don't you believe it? Why did he say it like that? This is a character that barely talks, and out of nowhere, they make him sound like a drunk demon for no reason. It's so strange and random, it feels like a Ren and Stimpy joke. Recognize this meme? It also comes from here. <laughs> Yeah, it's classic. Make it funnier when the gun goes off, he spends the rest of his time with this red toupee. <laughs> yeah. That could work for just the next cutaway joke, but he keeps it throughout the entire thing. That's dedication. The sound editing is some of the best in any of these cartoons. Like when he tries to lure Jerry into his mouth with this wind-up toy. Come up and see me sometime. Come up and see me sometime. <laughs> <laughs> he lost teeth. <laughs> That's so good. The frustration builds so much, just losing a tooth after eating that toy is enough to finally push him past his breaking point. Not <laughs> losing a tooth. Just losing... <laughs> losing at least two. Jesus Christ. God, that's so good. The frustration builds so much, just losing a tooth after eating that toy is enough to finally push him past his breaking point. There's a bunch of great little details in this. A random mouse book. It's like the names of the romantic restaurant or some of these explosions. And good God, these are the funniest sounds Tom has ever made. <laughs> Bill Hanna famously did all of Tom's screams and yells, and this is hands down the best collection of them. <laughs> it 
also has, in my opinion, the funniest Tom yell of all time. It's when he sets up a bear trap only to have Jerry place it behind him. And the best thing is, it's broken up into two parts. <laughs> yeah, it's classic. Oh, God. Through the ceiling and everything. Oh, that's so good. <laughs> yeah, see? Even Doug can't help it. Oh, that's so good. There is so much pain in that yell, and the muffle heard through the wall while he's still clearing oh, the pain. Oh, that thing. I'm sorry. I achieve comedy nirvana every time I hear this. In fact, play it again. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> you can't get like. I relate. I relate, Doug. That's a good one. That's a great. That's a great bit. Oh my god. Running in a bottle, but man, you can record people <coughs> in a moment, and this is that moment. <laughs> <coughs> oh shit, I'm coughing. <coughs> what can I say? This is Tom and Jerry. It's everything Tom and Jerry uh. is. Just a cat trying to catch a mouse done to perfection. There's others that are more artistically pleasing or reveal more character or tell a little bit more of a story, but... If you were to say point to the best Tom and Jerry cartoon, the funniest one that also sums up exactly what it is at its core, this has to be my number one choice. It's hilarious. That's a good number it's one hilarious. choice. God damn it, it's hilarious. It is absolute perfection. It's a good number one choice. Also, it's not just the toupee, but also the hiccups, like Tom getting the hiccups and keeping them throughout, even after he's dead. With that said, humor is subjective, so do you agree with my list? If not, what are your all-time favorite Tom and Jerry cartoons? What are some of your favorite all-time Tom and Jerry moments? Let me know in the comments down below and keep reminding people why this iconic duo <laughs> is still so goddamn funny. It is! Uh-oh. I'm a nostalgia critic, and I'll be better next week. One more time. Ah! Jesus! Oh, God! So long, cousin. Oh god. Okay. I need to find that one. Let's see, that one cartoon. Let's see. Oh man, Jerry. Let's see. Ah, oh, there it is. The Yankee Doodle Mouse. <laughs> The Yankee Doodle Mouse, I don't know what it is. This one just... This one just tickles my funny bone so much. Let's see. Academy Award winner of 1940... Did this one win? Wait. Yeah, Cat Reach Shelter. That's it. That's literally it right there. <laughs> Yankee Doodle Mouse. So, that's the one. That's the one that, for me, is probably my favorite Tom and Jerry episode, or Tom and Jerry short. Uh, did he have that in his honorable mentions? Let's see. Let's see. I think he did. I think it was there. Let me just make doubly sure before. So... Cat napping, trap happy, truce hurts, the little orphan, hiccup pup, two musketeers, bodyguard. No, Doug didn't even have it in his honorable mentions. Jesus. That one surpri that surprises me. Because for me, uh, in terms of uh, some slapstick, in terms of, like, for me, the best slapstick I've seen from Tom and Jerry... Uh, Yankee Doodle Mouse is, is the best. I mean... God, dude. I just have so many great memories of this... of this episode. <clears throat> and I would love to... <laughs> I would love to 
go back and watch a lot of the older Tom and Jerry, uh, Tom and Jerry uh, shorts and everything, because they're just timeless, dude. They're just so classic. Yeah, Yankee Doodle Mouse. See, animated in Technicolor. Oh gosh. <laughs> Wow, okay, so Ray Pat oh Ray Patterson. First short to be animated by Ray Patterson, who arrived from Screen Gems. Patterson would work for the Wow, okay. Did not know that. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, there was a missing sequence too. Okay, so the short was reissued in 1950. A gag involving a ration stamp was removed in the reissued print. In the sequence where Jerry hits Tom with a board four times, Jerry attempts to run off. The sequence fades to black. In the original missing sequence, Tom follows him, only to get his head stuck in Jerry's hole. Jerry then uses Tom's tongue to lick a war bond stamp. The second war uh, communique reads, Enemy gets, in a, Enemy gets in a few good licks. Signed, Jerry, Lieutenant Jerry Mouse. Yeah, so... Good lord. I, I... God, I love... I love this one so much. So... <laughs> I... Let's see... Ah, there it is. Yankee Doodle Mouse won the Oscar for Best Animated Short Film, making it the first of the seven Tom and Jerry cartoons to receive this distinction. <coughs> So yeah, Yankee Doodle Mouse was the first one to win an Oscar. I did not know that. That's awesome. That is so good. Oh. Also, Tom and Jerry won seven Oscars? Holy shit. <laughs> oh, man. Let's see. So, yeah, there it is. Uh, MGM, who did... Let's see, who did the animations for a while? History. Hanna-Barbera era. Uh, 1940 to 1958. After that, uh, the Gene uh, Ditch area. The Gene Ditch area. Or era. The Chuck Jones era. Let's see. Yeah. Gosh. Wait. Wait, for real? Tom and Jerry left the U.S. in 1961. They revived it in 1961 and contracted European animation studio Rembrandt Films to produce 13 Tom and Jerry shorts. Um, uh, wow. Um, uh, that's actually, that's actually interesting. I didn't know that. Huh. Let's see. Wow. Yep. <laughs> Tex Avery. There he is. Gosh. Alright. Anyway, I, I got nothing else. I this is a this is a great uh, like Tom and Jerry's so great and it's timeless. Anyone can watch it at any time and be endlessly entertained. Uh, like I said earlier in the video, what are your favorite Tom and Jerry shorts? Let me know in the comments down below and I guess until next time. I'm Nate. I'll see you then. Peace.